tech grow it here. Thought we'd have a little um, brief look at bipolar transistor phase splitting. So let's get into it. So anyway, here we have the basic circuit. So that's uh, mm, NPN transistor just there. And then it has some resistors, so one resistor on the collector, one on the emitter. And then the same configuration on the um, base. And then it, on the input side it has a, a capacitor uh, for blocking the DC and then an extra resistor. And um, this is feeding in 100 hertz. And um, the feed vo supply voltage is 20 volts. And as you see, it makes quite a nice solution here. So I thought, thought we'd actually have a little bit of a look into how how you kind of design this kind of circuit. So, um, you know, we could take my favorite book and go to the relevant page. Pages, actually, it's several pages. Okay, okay, okay. Wait, wait a second. It's like stop. You know, you you know that you, you can you can just like design this with common sense and and using Ohm's law. So um, you know, just 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 put the book away for now. So okay, let's have a look. Simpler look. So basically, it looks like this. So you have um, the input signal comes in there, uh, adjusting the input impedance capacitor blocking DC and you have the transistor and you have out one and out two and, and um, it's um, inter the interesting is they're in, they have a 180 degree phase shift between these two two uh, waveforms like you see in the oscilloscopes so in, in addition to splitting it then it creates a phase difference and then there's two resistors so anyway it's Let's break this down and see what we do, how to design it. So anyway, I put some um, sp yeah, you know, 20 volts, 0, 20. Uh, the frequency, 100 hertz, a little bit more. Uh, or out, we can just forget about it for now. Uh, the rest current on the collector is set to 1 milliamp. And there's no silly signal. And um, since, as we can see in the oscilloscope, you have two signals that are varying and you need to have voltage space for them to move so you can't put the um, rest voltage at this specific point to um, 10 volts you need to have it higher so it can go minus plus minus so let's say 50 volts so let's say the voltage there is 15 uh, at rest and then the collector current flowing through here is 1 milliamp and then ah oh, well you could basically cal calculate that and if you calculate this resistor, it'll be about um, 5 kilo ohms, but then we can take a standard value, and then this will be 4.7. So, we got that one. So this is how you do it. You, you take um, section one section at a time. Let's move on to the next one. So, moving on, we, now we take the emitter side, um, one resistor here, we want it to be able to swing and not and leave some voltage for the uh, transistor to work with. So let's say we want the voltage at that point to be 5, and we know that the rest current is set to 1 milliamp, so then we can actually count that as, and basically we come up with the same result, 5 kilo ohms, um, the sta nearest standard value is 4.7. So now we know that one. So now we need to fix the um, base voltage divider. And um, since we have a rest condition here, the voltage on the base should be around 5, 5.6. So you need to calculate a resistor divider that gives you the voltage di distribution so that you get 5 to 5.6 volts on the, on the base. And it's rusting now. The, 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 there's in the literature it goes into very complicated, relatively complicated explanations of how 
how you should dimension these, but basically what you w want to avoid is these have to be large, large um, resistors. And um, they, they, they shouldn't determine um, where the signal lies when you actually um, bringing in the input signal. So, so we can um, pretty much say that this is uh, could throw in um, maybe like start with over 50 kilo for this one and, and I can even uh, establish it ex experimental but anyway um, the voltage distribution voltage division that gives 5.5 to 5.6 and then um, not with a an, an impedance that uh, doesn't disrupt the input signal when it starts to operate and I would say start you know over over 50 kilos for that somewhere in that range so we can cheat and I can give the values that were actually used but uh, without going into more 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 complexities then then you if you want to keep it simple then it's just to you know it is a simple voltage divider and then just make sure that the the, the values are high enough that they won't disturb the you know, input they won't load the input signal um, when it's trying to control the um, transistor and it can actually be even established by um, prototyping Standard value is 180k. We'll give you that time um, so. So anyway, here's the last test to put the um, capacitor to block the DC and then possibly a resistor. If once since this very oversimplistically is to increase the impedance of the circuit to make it um, less of a load for what, what's feeding it. And I mean, really, if it's 100 hertz, I mean, we've gone through capacitors before, if we go, we can go and, uh, if it's only a DC blocking capacitor and it's 100 hertz, uh, then we can just uh, I'll give you the right value. 0 0.1 microfarad, or you can experiment whatever fits. It's, you could you can theoretically calculate what it exactly should be basically if it's a dc blocking capacitor then you can throw it in there and look at the scope and as long as you don't get any really weird divergences you're on the right track And the same also applies with increasing the input input impedance if you notice that the circuit if it doesn't um, work very well then you can actually increase the impedance by adding resistor so but basically uh, that's the way you do it with just um i would say common sense logic and um ohm's law and um and and basically one can put it put a circuit together and, and and measure it and see if it works and if it doesn't then adjust the appropriate resistors as needed it doesn't always need to be high math and, and and all the theory behind it you can actually calculate these things just by breaking it into its individual parts and um, handling them handling them as separate units so i hope you found this informative um, please consider subscribing uh, hit the like button if you thought the video was worth it. Merch is available, or if you'd just like to buy me a cup of coffee, the links are in the comments. Uh, all the contributions will go in towards developing the channel and adding on more projects. And I'll see you in the next one.